three crew members who will be on board the International Space Station for the final flight of the space shuttle will also be on orbit to celebrate the shuttle's 30th birthday and the 50th anniversary of the first human spaceflight. Their Soyuz spacecraft is named in honor of the occasion. This is the first time that uh, that uh, vehicle will be named after someone. And as soon as we learned that this will be the case, especially uh, Yuri Gagarin's name will be used to name a Soyuz spacecraft, we were very happy. First light of Yuri Gagarin just opened the uh, space era and uh, shuttle uh, flight was also a, uh, a significant uh, uh, event at that time. It's going to be great to be on board when basically everybody thinks about the fact that 50 years ago Yuri Gagarin made his first flight and now we think that living and working in space is part of everyday life. In 50 years since then, we've made some pretty big steps and we've, and we've done some amazing things. And I think we've pretty much cemented that we're not a you know, one planet species, if we choose not to be a uh, one planet species anymore. But there are even more incredible things looking, looking there, waiting for us. And, and I'm, you know, it, it, I, I, feel, I feel good and happy to be part of this. And, and it's, 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 I feel satisfied. It's, it's, it's very interesting. And we'll have to show great work, great results, and also uh, show that the time which has elapsed since the very first flight of Yuri Gagarin and uh, Alan Shepard hasn't uh, gone in vain, but we've learned something in space. To keep learning things, this crew has a full agenda of scientific experiments. I have, a, I have a table here that actually shows the, the list of all the experiments that are going to be planned for my missions. I counted them. There are more than 60 in various uh, disciplines, you know, human research, fluid physics, material science, you know, radiation monitoring, biology, education, earth observation, technology, facility operation. I mean, it's a very complex uh, operation. And as is true with real estate, location is all important. Astronauts can do things in space they can't do on Earth, including serve as test subjects for research on the human body that could lead to better medical care for people on Earth. By floating around in, in microgravity, we don't actually put stress on our bones, and we lose bone mass at a very high rate, much higher than your average 70-year-old woman with osteoporosis. And that means in just a few months, we can understand what happens to bones when they start to, quote unquote, dissolve? And how do they rebuild themselves? And how can we prevent that from happening? The station's science capability will get a big boost when shuttle mission STS-134 delivers the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, a 15,000 pound, $2 billion multinational cosmic particle detector that will reside on the top of the space station's truss to look for antimatter and dark matter. Its powerful magnet will attract passing cosmic particles toward five types of detectors. 300,000 data channels will provide information to scientists who hope to get a better understanding of the origins of the universe. It's, you know, many or orders of magnitude more sensitive than anything we've ever, you know, put into space to, to do this. So it's really, you know, we're, the, the scientists are, are very excited and we're all very excited that, you know, we have an opportunity here to really make some amazing discoveries. Endeavour's crew will also deliver spare parts and conduct four spacewalks. A few weeks later, when Kondratyev, Nespoli and Coleman depart for Earth, Barisenka takes over as commander of Expedition 28. The crew will grow with the early June arrival of a new Soyuz with former station commander Sergei Volkov, veteran space shuttle astronaut Mike Fossum, and first-time flyer Satoshi Furukawa of Japan. That group will greet the crew of shuttle Atlantis when it delivers more supplies and spare parts and supports a spacewalk by Garin and Fossum to move the cooling system pump module that failed last year into the payload bay for return to Earth. And then they will wave goodbye as the last space shuttle to ever visit the station undocks to complete its final flight.
Perhaps in the future we will have more developed vehicles, but the shuttle will remain in history as one of the most successful vehicles in the history of the cosmonautics. And whether it's deploying the Hubble Space Telescope, repairing the Hubble Space Telescope, building the space station, all the satellites that launched, all the satellites that recovered, you know, all the other the scientific experiments that were conducted on board, you know, I think it, you know, I'm, I'm really proud to have flown on the space shuttle and to be a part of the space shuttle program. But uh, I do believe that the future lies with such systems as the space shuttle and the Buran vehicle. Ten years may pass, maybe even twenty, and our technologies will allow us to create such spacecraft in a short amount of time and uh, much cheaper. During the summer, the crew will execute a spacewalk from the Russian segment of the station, continue preparations for the arrival of a commercial cargo ship later in the year, and work their agenda of laboratory research. Garin plans to spend some of his time on a global effort to share an astronaut's perspective on the Earth with the people on the surface, to inspire work on problems we face, and to let them know about the work being done inside humankind's orbiting laboratory. That effort exists on the internet at the address fragileoasis.org. The other aspect of the site is to just allow people to experience this with us vicariously through our videos, through our pictures, through our blogs. We've got a number of astronauts that will be um, blogging on, on the site and to be able to basically have everybody along, not as spectators, but as crewmates, as fellow crewmates on this mission with us.